from Samstown in Vegas here for the title matches of today's JBT event. It's the Mojave Doubles Classic. This is a Baker format step ladder finals. So the two partners are combining to form one team game and that's worked really well for Dominic Montoya and Tyler Castronova. They've climbed the scratch step ladder to get to this point to face top seeds Jerry Johnson and Sebastian Huffman. They started the day with a bang, 567, 266 from Sebastian and 299 from this young man. Jerry here holding the flat 10 for what's going to be the high game of the day now since we're into Baker action. First frame for Johnson, he'll be doing all the odd numbered shots all on the right hand lane. Sebastian will do all the even numbered shots on the left hand lane, so Huffman, the youth bowler, will finish the match. Teams could be youth, youth, or youth adult. Sebastian, already a five time champ, has all kinds of various titles. One of them is a doubles title with Buddy Lucas, who is the young, youngest bowler to win a scratch doubles title. Sebastian was, but was not. High backswing, lots of crank, and 10 battle strike 100 out of 100 times. Perfect double to open them up. These matches go super fast, so each bowler's only got five frames to figure out what's going on. Kind of an advantage here. It's always an advantage in the step ladder finals for the bowler who's coming up the ladder. I think it's magnified when you've only got these five frames to get it figured out. Let's see when TC doing the second. He comes up high. Uh, looks like the very tall team of Caden and John are going to reach the handicap title match over Dylan and Austin here. We'll keep an eye on that. There we go. That's Donahue making his first finals in quite a while, so happy for that, but it looks like it'll be just a little short. Castronova's got to get that ball to hook. It does. Hold on, a pretty easy pattern today. Chromium. And the trouble with easy patterns is eventually easy patterns break down. And they're easy until you try to figure out what to do at that point. And you see there's a lot of friction now just about everywhere. You've got to go super left to deal with it, but you can't go so left and, and uh, cover so many boards that uh, your ball bleeds off all its energy and you don't have a powerful shot in the pocket. See Dominic right around the fifth arrow. No, oh, rolls that solid nine out. Yeah, it does get the nine out, baby. So John and Kane are going to win that match scratch. They had, uh, they had 12 pins on top of that, so good enough. So it'll be uh, two very short people in the title match. Heck out of me. There's gonna be plenty to talk about as top seeds Gage Baker and Nathan Tidball wait in the distance. Here's Johnson. Ticket number 77. Oh, I don't think I caught that on camera. John missed the 4 6 by a fraction. Excellent match, everybody. Ah, oh, there you go. Johnson, that beautiful smooth form. He could keep that form up for the next 50 years or so. Johnson, of course, in his early 30s, keeps that nice smooth roll on the ball, and no problem at all. Nice looking shot. I am too, so, you know, it's all right. Yeah. Huffman has smoothed out his game, as, as a lot of youngsters do. Once they learn to hook a ball, they just crank it without a whole lot of finesse. Now he's got those shoulders quiet, and is able to repeat shots more and more. That's why he's a threat every week in the scratch division. When you're ready, you get to roll the ball twice on each lane. Guys, they're going to practice. You do not practice. Just hang out. Each of you roll the ball twice on each lane. Good shot. Let that little roller 10 pin hard and straight at it. No problem at all. Seven, nine, ten up. 
nicely done. No shame in that whatsoever. The plaque is yours to keep. Both of your names and dates will be on it. We'll see you in the Mojave Invitational. Austin Dow, Austin. For a put together team. That would be great. The plaque is yours. Both your names will get you into the Invitational at the end of the year. All right. Just as good as anything else. Thank you very much. Great. Congrats. Good team. Good team as it turned out. Well done. Two on each. Two on each. Well done. Alright, so Castronova was able to make that spare as we wrap up the Habits Handicap Semifinal. And Montoya stays perfect on his side, so the team is Dutch. He's got strikes in the first, third, and fifth. See if Castronova can regain the strikes as Jerry has been perfect so far as well with strikes in his first and third. Team leads by 19 overall with that early trip. Oh, what a break. <laughs> he looks over at that going, what had happened was right through the beak and they just go Woof. They all fell down, that's all that matters. Now, big opportunity for Huffman to take advantage of that and double up and extend their team's lead to 29. Folks, the handicap difference for the title match is 20. Gage and Nathan are going to have to win this match by 20 to tie, 21 to win. That's half the difference of your team's handicap. As a team, you guys get to decide whether you want to start first, which means you finish last, or let them do that. Handicap just getting started, and the bowling gods give, and then they take away. Is that ball a lot better than the last one he threw? And something went right between the four and the seven, which is not a lot. There's 12 inches from the bottom of a pin to the next pin. There's not a whole lot of room around the uh, the fat portion of it, but he converts that four seven, and as a result, they continue to lead by 18 pins. Gage Baker, part of the top seeded team. They are, that is the first frame over there. They've got to win this match by 21 pins to win. Can't start off any better than that. Not too long ago, he was their size. Things have changed somewhat. They've gone vertical, they have not yet gone vertical. There's Huffman. Yes, you bet. Boy, still anybody's game over there. Huffman's team pacing the 220s. And this is the, shot, the key shot in this match here is Castronova comes up with his team on a three-bagger. They can take the lead with this shot. Waiting team number three, you ready for that ball? Waiting team number three. Come on, Tyler. Oh, oh, catches the break of the day with that Brooklyn hit right there. Not his best shot as the bowlers are fighting those dry out conditions. He will take the Brooklyn all day long right there as Abagania's got a split to work with. Of course, part of Team Abagania, John, Caitlin, and Josh, all with good results. They all made the cut today with different partners. Looking for five in a row. Um, Montoya unable to capitalize. Just not, well, he's going to be up quicker at the spare. This time it's John taking his time and Dominic up quickly on the spare. Dom, by the way, has still only been bowling for a year and a half and he has already signed to Pennington College out in Indiana. Look at that! One. How much reaction from John on an excellent spare covering up that 3, 6, 7, 10. Do not let their size fool you. These guys are players. Nicely done in the first frame there. So yeah, he has already signed to college. He's going to go both Jordan a lot. Bless this kid. 
How about that? Sebastian's got some years to go before he's got to worry about that. Uh, good shot by Jerry there, but the four pin does not go. He's had an interesting last three frames. Caden Sham's got a while to go before college. He's going to crank that plastic Belmo ball over most of the lane here. No, he needed to cover even more board. Something like that. So the five leads to 3-6. 227 with spare strike spare. The other team would do the same for 228. First things first, cover up that four pin. So Johnson's work is done. It's all up to Huffman here. Pending a no tie outcome. Woo, this gems ball just holds on and covers that spin. They cannot shut out the other team. First ball in the tenth for Huffman. Look at that, ten with it. That's their scoreboard there with Sebastian Strike already in in the tenth. Look at these awesome scoreboards that uh, we have Tom Pippinger does here. So thanks so much to Tom and Christy and the whole crew and Audra and everybody making our Samstown visits so great year after year. Singles action tomorrow and then main event is the next up in the Mojave Conference. We head into our doubles days, our favorite times of the year. Second shot in the tenth, Sebastian Huffman. Got a Boy, that's that's that tricky little spot where they become a little cliff. Where the, what's left of the oil, the ball projects a little too far. If he gets it right from there, it checks up at nine feet. So good shot. Important spare, force the 20 fill out of his opponents. As Baker is struck in his first two shots, he is sprouting up. And that's tough sometimes, especially when you're trying to keeping your timing when you're growing. 227 for Sebastian and Jerry. Tyler must get a strike on this ball to have a chance to win in regulation. Nine on this ball, he would need spare strike at the time. Less than nine, they lose. Catch a shot of John Abigail coming on over there, but right now it's about Castronova. Can he figure out? Brooklyn last time. High again. Boy, he breaks up the 310. That 310 was standing a long time. Breaks it up and spares it. If they tie, we go down to a one shot roll off like we always do. First things first, must cover up this three pin and he missed it. Oh no. Oh. Boy, oh boy, one year ago at Sam's down here we had a dramatic finish with a missed eight pin causing the difference. He just, it grabbed is the wrong word for a two-hander bowler, but he grabbed, I mean, that's, I don't know how else to put it. Off his hand, he knew he missed it. Sebastian and Jerry catch a huge break. What looked to be a roll-off for all the world turns into a win for the top seeds. Wow, what a heartbreaker. Tyler's a nice kid from a nice family. Feel bad for him right there and his partner, of course, but a great win for Sebastian. Every time you feel bad for one person, it's good news for the other person. The parents seem happier with that Brooklyn there. We'll take it. We'll take it. So this is a three-foot Caden and seven-foot Justo. He was, <laughs> had no problem with that. So now we'll come over here and focus on our handicap title match. Nathan and Gage have to win by 20. Tidball opened in his second frame. Gage struck in the third. Let's see if Tidball can make the adjustments. And he does. Much better shot there in the fourth for a double and his team. And they still trail in this match scratch as uh, John and Caden are clean so far through four frames. Everybody here has titles. Gage has two. Nathan has a couple, including, of course, main events. Nathan wants to make sure that I point out that this is the first time he's made a finals using React. Usually it's the hookingest purple plastic ball in world history, but uh, not so today. That purple plastic ball might hit lane one today, the way it hooks. Meanwhile, Baker unable to get his third consecutive strike personally and has a difficult split there to work with in the third. Four wins for Tim Ball, while two for Gage, including an invitational. Uh, both invitationals, actually. So. 
good way to win a couple titles early on. Of course, if the name Baker rings a bell, it's not just the format for the stepladder finals, but yes, that is Mark Baker's kid. He, he, he's just coach dad on weekends, hanging back there, being proud of his kid as he should. Oh, we got to lower the camera here. That's right, the short ones are rolling now. Short, but how much talent in both of these kids. Fearless against the bigger guys, and why shouldn't they be? Both two enders. They hit that spot too early, the ball, especially irritating balls, they uh, lose all their power. Just, oh, we used to call rolling out. It's not quite the same dynamic, but it's similar. Makeable spare and didn't lose any count on that strike as well. Uh, would you like some firewood? I'm sorry. That is a heartbreaker. I feel bad, but it's so great. Hello, man. Yeah, just like the good old days. We have, uh, in case you didn't know, I am bowling as one of our sponsors. And if you weren't sure of that, we have a representative, Captain Fernandez. So they remain clean through five, and while they haven't been impossible spares, that's still a six count, an eight count, a seven count, and a six count. So certainly no gimmies on the spares. They've converted all of them. Champ struck last time in the Brooklyn. He'd love to do it again. Brooklyn, Jersey, Toronto, he doesn't care as long as they all fall down. Years ago when Gage and Nathan were little, ball speed is the problem with the two-handers because they, they, there's so much power, but when the lanes dry out as dry as they are right now, you need some ball speed to get the ball down the lane. It's just oil isn't enough to project it far enough, and as they grow, they'll of course develop that ball speed. Right now, Caden down to plastic and, and looks like he's about as far left as he's willing to go. Caden comes around the ball a little more. John is more end over end. <laughs> Nathan bops him. <laughs> Gives him a pop on the head. <laughs> that was awesome. Hi. Hello. How are you? Um, you had a near miss today, didn't you? I got the yellow. I got the yellow on my own. Oh. My, my teammate, I'm glad. He put me back in shape. There you go. No, I'd rather him go light than high. He's probably wondering how long you do go light. Nathan, of course, rocking one of our I Am Bowling Season 27 JV t-shirts. If you wear that or the patch, you're splitting part of a $5,000 scholarship prize that I am as offered throughout the season as part of their title sponsorship. Thank you so much to them for that. Great support of the Hughes Bowl and all over the place. No problem with the spare. The problem is on the scoreboard. They trail by 13 and are giving another 20 after that. So a 33 pin lead for Team Shorty. Team are rapidly taller. Part of the gauge here. I tell you, he's thrown a foot in the last six months. Hard to keep them in shoes, I'm sure. Ah, pretty ball there.